This is definitely one of the most important videos that I've ever made. Actually, it probably is the most important. It's very personal to me. Recently, I uploaded a video about transcendence and I said that that was the way I manifested it. Although it is, it's like that's the whole concept of it. Becoming your higher self is the first thing you need to do. And let me tell you right now, the one thing I want to get out of the way is that healing is becoming your higher self. So whether you're healing or whether you're not, which I suggest it because you have to dissolve your limiting beliefs. That is the core of transcendence also is transcending the world around you, transcending limiting beliefs. But it's like when you're healing, you're doing it in one way. When you're becoming your higher self, you're actually embodying it. That's always going to go on. So what do you mean you have to heal first? That's not the case. When you are becoming your higher self, your higher self is embodying what is becoming as you are healing. Your higher self is very unlimited, very abundant already, very connected to your soul, to your purpose. I don't, I know I don't say what I manifested in that video, but I will tell you because it's like, why would you listen to me? I manifested my dream job. In the past, I've manifested other things at this apartment. I've manifested a lot. Like, what I'm saying is like, the past few years have not been easy for me. I don't want to get into everything. I will tell you what I feel I should tell you that will let you know I can relate to you no matter really how stuck, sad, alone you're feeling right now. I'm telling you, I get it. I'm going to share with you what i've done throughout the past two years because it really is a journey and it's crazy because you look back and you don't realize how far you came really at the end of the day what came of that was connecting to my higher self so i'm going to tell you things that i've done tell you the not so pretty part of it because again like i can relate to having to push yourself to do things like this and believe things like this when you're going through a hard time basically for two years i was being really bullied non-stop rumors being spread about me I was basically being stalked. I couldn't even like upload on my social media without seeing accounts looking at my stuff. I completely just became very, not introverted, but wanted to actually spend a lot of time alone with myself because when I really started to think about it, I realized that I really wasn't upset about losing these people because then I started to think about like leading up to it and I wasn't happy around them to begin with. I felt very disconnected. I felt like I just didn't really truly fit in. My intuition was always saying it, but I knew that I was upset because I needed to address something in me. That's where the journey starts. When I had that chance to really come back to myself is when I started reading, meditating a lot, praying a lot, going out in nature more by myself. Like I'll get more into the different things help me the most the different practices the different habits all of that beside my career i knew that something creative was always missing like some kind of creative pursuit that i was supposed to be having i felt very restless so it didn't make sense to me and that's when i came on youtube and it was weird like i just felt compelled to do it and i looked at myself and got back in touch with myself i realized like i was so like Created like ideas to talk about were always coming to me because I always loved public speaking. I was in councils at my previous job. It's weird when you look at these traits, how many opportunities you're missing. When you are your higher self, when you connect to that purpose, I'm telling you, anything that you want to manifest in this life will come to you. And you know, like, I'm not saying quit your job and go pursue your dream. I'm saying that no matter what, yeah, you should love what you do. With me, I love my career, but now that I have a creative outlet, it's like you stop limiting yourself like stop telling yourself that you can only do one or the other you can't live in fear you have to stop thinking about the things that you cannot do and really look at what you can do it's like it almost boggles my mind you need to stop living in a doubt mindset there's no point in it there is no point in it it's so crazy because we're really trained to think that way like that is the normal way to think it takes like focus because you do have to get clear on who you are what you want why you want to do it spend some time in silence actually that's what transcendence meditation is is sitting there in silence that is the best way to connect yourself you literally just sit there you can put on i suggest theta waves watch the creativity come to you like watch the ideas come to you whatever meditation works for you but i do highly suggest transcendental meditation it doesn't require focus it doesn't require anything of you except to sit there let your thoughts pass and you have a mantra but your mantra is not really supposed to be based on like an outcome actually which is even weirder i put up a video last week saying that i had a new mantra that was i want to know so i let go 
and that's like the perfect mantra actually that you could use for that type of meditation it's basically just to get your thoughts to pass or count in your head and watch how quickly it stops to connect to yourself in that meditation to get beyond the limits of what is around you or even beyond yourself to really get into your subconscious mind i'm telling you also you have to plan ahead and what i mean by that is listen we all have our days we all have stressful times and when you're going after big things chances are you're gonna have big things to deal with <laughs> so what is your higher self going to do in the face of challenges in the face of obstacles are they going to fold under pressure or are they going to find a way to get things done and if so what is that way even on your bad days how is your highest self going to show up it has to look different to be different and to feel different how is your higher self going to feel how is your higher self going to dress i like mood boards for this i have different color-coded sections according to different moods and different vibes and obviously keep in mind like when you're making these inspo boards with your new outfits you don't have to go on a whole shopping spree it's the style that you want to embrace more so also another thing that i realized i did was starting wearing things that were symbolic of me one example being necklaces with my birthstone on it bracelets with my birthstone on it i also really do not go out drinking ever it's very very seldom but going out has just come to a complete minimum at this point you know when you're deciding who you are also really get clear on what you value that's very very important that should really be like your moral code for yourself and for others for every decision you make like what do you value your values go such a long way those are basically your primary intentions at all times another thing that i do all the time without even realizing it now is watching my posture stand up straight sit up straight it actually makes you feel better too i've had mirrors all around my apartment I always watch myself walk as i'm walking i really try to feel in my body i feel like when i stress my body out my mind gets stressed out the way you really could go about this is looking at yourself and deciding all the things you don't like and then just eliminating those things and honestly coming up with their opposite you know the way i see it the whole thing is you don't like these things for a reason when you decide who you want to be assume it to be it's like why would you want that if that wasn't you why would you even want it that's why everyone is different because we all want different things so when you decide who your higher self is listen it's not like this thing on a pedestal it's you it just again that's why i say it comes with healing because as you heal the trauma that's inside of you when you overcome the things that have happened to you when you do a lot of self-reflection you come to this place of self-acceptance when you start to embrace all of these positive things that you want to be you're gonna see it's so natural it's like not this unattainable ideal it's just going to take reminding yourself once in a while but the biggest thing you have to do is assume it to be listen i see it as one day at a time we are taking everything one day at a time but all i know is i'm not once you stop imposing so much resistance on yourself or so much unnecessary blocks to who it is that you want to become as you step into this highest version of yourself you need to maintain a positive outlook on life and you need to really show up with that belief and what i mean by that is when you are becoming your highest self and you expect to be surrounded by opportunities it's like you can't expect to be surrounded by opportunities or even to see opportunities they could be right in front of your face when you have a negative outlook on life the thing is i realize it's just so exhausting to stress yourself out know that you can find solutions so that's really how detachment comes into play your higher self should be detached from the external reality in the sense that that doesn't change who you are and it doesn't break you being mindful to the point where you have a positive outlook on life for the most part it requires patience and time. Stop yanking your thoughts away from your feelings. I've said so many times before, life is like a meditation. This is another way that life is like a meditation. You have to gently redirect your thoughts. Let's just focus on the now by focusing on the next step. You become very clear-minded. Another thing I've come to understand is when people tell you that when you enter this new dream life of yours, when you're manifesting, people fall out. You know what it is, is that you come to a different state of consciousness that you understand that people just don't resonate with you anymore. I'm not telling you that's definitely going to happen. I'm just saying it's likely because when you come to this different state of awareness about yourself and about the world, 
you might feel a little misunderstood and it's difficult but this inner knowing of that you are on the path that you are on because you chose that path for yourself and you know what you want it becomes a very big part of you and i'm not necessarily saying that it's like the easiest thing to just let people go and accept that you are becoming distant with people in your life that you were once close with you really develop such a strong sense of faith within yourself you start to become interested in different things and start to learn about different things it's very natural that people who are not doing that just people who are again on their different own journey it's bound to happen when you are really solid in your path it's like you can't let it shake you you get the sense of gratitude that okay well at least we figured it out at least you know there's not more time wasted at least i'm figuring it out now you literally become who you were meant to be you're not really made up of the same influences that you once were you do really start to grow the different interests the lack of things to really connect on it's going to be so obvious that you're going to feel very out of alignment you're going to feel very drained in certain situations you're going to feel like you're really not meant for it it's not going to feel right to you another thing is you need to get firm on your boundaries and that is going to look different for everybody depending on different experiences different lessons that we've been taught until you do that you're going to be dragged into the same situations unknowingly when you let people break those you are giving a signal to your brain to yourself that you don't love yourself you don't care about yourself and you need to accept that you made those boundaries for a reason you made those boundaries off of your own insight and off of things that have happened to you throughout this whole journey you never want to go back you really want to prevent yourself from doing that you need to be conscious of the things that you were once attracted to especially the things that you were attracted to that did not serve you you need to avoid that at all costs and get really clear with your boundaries so that you know when to walk away from people who are crossing those do not let people cross your boundaries that's like the biggest thing you're doing all of this work on yourself it's like no like you don't allow that no matter what you you don't really save yourself the time because i am a firm believer that you'll be presented the same situations that even taught you that lesson over and over and over again believe me what i'm gonna tell you right now is that missing my skincare routine is out of the question some kind of self-care routine that you strictly adhere to every single day signaling to yourself that you're taking care of yourself by doing things like that it's really important to continuously pour into yourself the way i like to see it when I'm alone, all of my intention is inward. When I go out, all my attention is outward. I say this because when I'm home alone, I want to use that time to focus on myself. So this means no scrolling. Do not compare yourself to anybody. When you are home alone, you have to look at that as your time to come back to yourself so that you can show up for yourself the next day. When you go out places, like wherever, keep looking for possibilities all around you. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to run into. You literally never know. And I think that's really crazy, but I also think it's really beautiful. This is really just how I have begun to look at life all the time. You really never know what could happen. It's so crazy because our past is so limited in the past and it's really not even real if you think about it then it's like you don't expect anything more than the past but you really never know what could happen to you any day that you leave the house like wherever you go don't wait for people to go and adventure with you go out and do things by yourself it, that's so important when you're out and you're focusing your attention outward it's like you're present to see the opportunities around you you're present to see the people around you when you close yourself off to even thinking that anything like that is possible it's like that's that's kind of irrational actually that's kind of crazy when you start doing unexpected things unexpected things are going to appear so when you're out you also want to talk to people and like meet people you also want to like see the world around you i've addressed how again scrolling i am in so many videos you know what at least in the morning at least try to stay off the phone for like an hour. Like I have my phone on do not disturb until I get to work or to clinical rotations or to school. But I'm telling you right now, if I am off for the day, that phone is not being looked at until after I get up out of bed, make my bed, shower, clean the house. Like that all takes me two hours, honestly. And I also sit down, read and study for a little while. But aside from staying off the phone in the morning, 
another thing that I really highly suggest you get into. So there's a window right next to me. I sit by this window every single morning and just look outside and I'll sip my coffee and it's very grounding. It's honestly, that is like the best thing that I have implemented into my mornings. Actually, days that I do have to be up early, I wake up more early just so that I can do that. Just so that I can get at least 25 minutes of that into my morning. It starts off your day on a completely different note. I also do that at night. Like at night, I'll sit by the window and journal. You need to get into little creative, childlike things like this. It connects you to a different fun-loving part of yourself and the world is like adulterated everywhere it's like why can't you have that time to yourself aside from your obligations i go to the park so often now and just go on the swings i used to love doing that as a child again these things it really just it opens up your heart it feels so good when you do things like that and also like i said this is all done in conjunction with healing i'll give you a legitimate example in the morning, I wake up and do my 369 journal. I do the shadow work journal sometime in the middle of the day. And then I have a gratitude and intention journal that I do at night. Practicing everyday gratitude, telling you, write down the smallest things. Write down water. Write down my bed. I'm telling you, it really is does wonders for your mental health. I promise you that. It actually does open you up to seeing what how much is around you to be so grateful for the importance of gratitude is that when you're grateful for what you have it also opens you up into a mindset of possibilities okay another thing i've done is scripted my agenda the way i see it like i have this mindset once we start we start you have to make the decision and decide that you are that person that is me so I'm just going to jump right into it and assume I am that person. That's another thing I'm going to tell you actually is to put affirmations everywhere you can see them. Okay, like I said, I've manifested a lot and when I do this, what I'm about to tell you, this is when I manifest the most. I put post-it notes all over my laptop because I'm constantly studying. It'll say affirmations related to self-love or, or whatever I'm trying to manifest into my life. But having those there all the time when you think about it you're always looking at it. Whether you realize it or not, you're always looking at it. I do this around my apartment too. There's like random little affirmations on my mirror. Another thing that I really highly suggest, because I'm gonna tell you right now, half of my vision board that I made for 2024 have come to fruition. But every single night, I put my vision board and my inspo board right by my bed, like right where I can see it as I'm falling asleep and I just look at it as I'm falling asleep. I've said this a lot of times, but again, I don't watch TV like that. If anything, I watch like podcasts on the TV, but that's it. Other than that, as I'm going to sleep, I really do listen to binaural beats or theta waves, like I said before. This is very good for your mental health. Again, it also keeps you creative. Like it really does change your brain so much. And listen, the last thing I'm gonna say is like, if you have anybody in your life close to you, friend, relationship, whatever, they're trying to constantly remind you of your past, they're constantly doubting you, one way or another, they're inhibiting you. You don't need that. Again, you want to get rid of self-limiting beliefs, so you don't need someone always in your ear just talking about the past and just questioning you and just trying to put you down. When you start to do things like that, people around you may assume that you are going to outgrow them. When you are trying to uplift everything around you, it's like, how can you have someone that is close to you dragging you down. They will inhibit you a lot. You could take like 10 steps forward and then end up taking like 15 steps back because of people like that. They're not worth it. You need to really have an expectation that the people around you are going to be considerate of you. It's better to really do anything alone than to do it with people that really don't have the best intentions for you or just want to drag you down. There's no point in having someone like that next to you. You have to understand what you're seeing. You're seeing that they are disregarding you. They're disregarding something that you're trying to do. They're disregarding your goals. They're disregarding your ambitions. Like, that's not okay. And another thing is you put this higher version of yourself on such a pedestal because you see the potential in yourself and you know what you're capable of already and you want to love yourself the way that that person loves himself. When you're doing anything in life, you need to ask yourself what that person would do, how that person would react, how that person would go about everything. You just have your mind on other things. You just need to train your mind to get on the right things for a long enough time, and you're gonna see you naturally become that person. So I guarantee you if you do the things that I put in this video, I mean, you could probably commit to this for three days and see 
a huge change in your mental health. When I get the chance, I will put the link in the description for all of the journals that I mentioned that I use. I hope this helped you.